Good day, friends. Maloa here. I'm excited to share with you today the second zone of the Hidden Horde of Abnankara. There are a ton of mobs and loads of mechanics to go over. Best to learn these on T1, because on T2, they pack a punch. Hi, I'm Maloa, and I live on the Lotro Brandywine server. I've been playing for the past 10 years, and I'm a raid addict. For the past week, I've been slugging through the Hidden Horde every day to explore all the game mechanics and get this awesome information put together for Tier 1. Let's dive right in. Okay, so right now we're going to look at Boss 2 Zone of Tier 1 of Hidden Horde. First of all, once again, we're going to start by looking at all the mobs, all the mechanics, and then look at the kill order, and then we will talk about the actual final boss, the second boss fight. Not final boss, second boss. Okay, so we start with Enthralled Guardians. Um, to note with them, they do have the buffs, they cannot be slowed, they cannot be crowd controlled. Okay, now the Guardians have an aura called Guardian's Defiance. And you can know that it's up because it has the shield and then it has the aura symbol on it. Now what this does is that it applies Guardian's Defiance to all of the mobs within its range. So there's a negative 90, negative 66% incoming melee range and tactical damage. So guess what? Guardians must die first. If they don't, then the fight will become impossibly long, which increase the risks of dying. So you want to target guardians first and get them first. They also have, um, from time to time, they will get battle trance on them. This is a corruption buff. And it's different than the guardians defiance. It's still a shield, but this time it has an up arrow on it. So it has a green little tag in the corner. And that's how you know that they've got corruption on them. This means that they get even less incoming melee and range damage, um, and they deal 10% more damage. So add this to that, that's 86% decreased incoming melee damage on the actual Guardian. So if you want to get the Guardian down quickest, you must ensure that you remove the corruption as soon as it pops on. Okay, it can be removed with corruption skills. Your tank um, needs to focus on this because they'll probably be targeting them. But this should also be everybody's priority to get the corruptions off. Okay, next we've got Enthralled Warrior. So what they do is they apply a rending wound. And the war this warrior's rending wound can stack up to 3-5 deep on the tank. And one of them does 73 damage every 3 seconds for 15 seconds. Now they can also apply a hamstring to you, which reduces your run speed by negative 15%. Eh, it's not really that important. Um, well, lots of fights we do, we, we don't really have to kite these around. Um, so the tanks should be able to stand still and take them. But really, you would want to get them sec down second because of the rending wound. And then you've got sappers. Sappers are just plain annoying because they drop these fire puddles all over the place. Um, and the puddles can stack. So you could be in four or five puddles at the same time. Okay, Each puddle does 10% morale damage every two seconds. So if you're standing in a stack of five, you're getting 50% morale damage every two seconds. That's That means in four seconds you're going to be dead. All right. So everyone must, must, must absolutely avoid the sapper puddles. Enough said about that. If you want to die, go jump in one. Next is the Black Arrows. Now, what they do is, is they apply a numbing poison um, to a single target. This reduces that person's incoming healing and increases their attack durations and skill inductions. 
Now, um, as far as damage is concerned, they do not do as much damage as the Warrior and the Guardian does. So they're lower on our list of priorities, but they kind of are important to get down if you want to speed up your fight. Then you get Hobgoblin Totems. Now, what totems are, they don't move around, they don't fight, it's just a totem, but they do reduce your physical and tactical mitigation by 25%. And the way you'll know you're within the aura of the, of the totem is that you'll get this red eye debuff bar underneath your, your name. So you want to make sure that if the totems are up, that the tank grabs the mobs, drag them away from the totems, and everybody is standing outside of the totems and fighting, because um, otherwise there, there's an increased risk of death. Now, typically we leave the totems for last to take down because we can um, mitigate its effect by just moving away from the totems. But the frost collars, oh boy, I really do not like the frost collars. Um, they pretty much do three things. First off is Gift of the Frost Heart. It's a corruption skill that they can get. Once again, you see that it's a snowflake and it has the plus, sorry, the up green arrow. That's how you know it's a corruption skill. So that gives 25% tactical damage and it deals more damage and it reduces the amount of damage that it can take. Okay, um, so they're kind of nasty. And then they do Clinging Frost. This is an induction that they do. It can be interrupted on T1. It does a negative, um, you can see down here, it does a negative 30% run speed, which is not, we don't really care about run speed, but it does do that. So if your tank's not moving fast enough, that's why. And, um, but more importantly, it does this 80,000 damage every 3 seconds for 18 seconds on T1. And you can see that it's a red hand with a red outline, meaning that you can remove this. Okay, so there's two ways to mitigate the frost collar. You either interrupt the induction or you're removing the wounds. And the hobgoblins can also summon the totems. These totems, okay. However, they're different, and you'll know they're different because this, the totems that the Frost Caller summons will say "Ally of Enthralled Frost Caller," the call, and the um, but they do the exact same mitigation damage. Uh, not mitigation damage, but reduction in mitigation. Oh, and it also <laughs> the also really awful thing that the totems does. It means that your tank cannot block, parry, or evade. Which, if you're a tank, that's critical for you to keep aggro on everybody, right? So, you, we do not like totems. We do not like frost collars. Um, they're high up on the on the kill order list. And then you've got the worms again, like we did for part one. The worms do the stacking of the common damage, 80k every eight. Three seconds for 18 seconds. Um, they can be removed, and you guys just need to pay attention for removing that. You've got the Cold Drakes, once again, does the massive breath frontal damage. It ha um, it ca it, so the tank needs to position the Drake that it is facing away from um, the, the rest of the raid. And then, like the Giants, it has cannot be slowed, cannot be crowd controlled needs to be controlled by the tank and it does the numbing cold aura which does a wound of 23 frost damage every two seconds for everybody for anyone that is close to the drake so typically what we do is we have the tank pick up the drake turn him away from the group and move him a couple of steps away from the group while the ray while the group is focusing um, on taking the worms down first and then the drake cold whelplings um there's like Annoying little mosquitoes that run all over the place, but they um, and they randomly select players There's just no way to control them or pick them up for aggro or Control or anything like that 
they, when they die, they do the expelled frost puddle. And this is 5% morale damage every three seconds. So you, it's absolutely important for everybody to pay attention to where they're standing when whelplings are up, because you want to make sure that people stay out of puddles. Now, mob kill order. We typically focus guardians first because they reduce mobs incoming damage by 66%, which is a lot. Then we focus on frost callers because the totems that they are going to summon is going to reduce players' mitigations by 25%. Um, then we do worms because they do 78k damage every 3 seconds and it can stack. Then warriors for, and then drakes. Finally, the sappers and the black arrows. And then if there are any totems still alive, we take care of the totems at the end. Okay? Um, so really, we have it focused and broken down by um, which of the mobs are the most dangerous to the entire group. And then we work our way down there to, eh, you know, the, the ones that are just annoying. All right. And that brings us to boss two. Boss two is called the Thrall Lord... Um, we just call him Dylan. Hey Dylan. Um, that's a nice shot of him on that side. Dylan has a couple of buffs on him. Okay, first is he has unyielding. This is where the foe is protected against all attempts to reduce its incoming healing. Um, it cannot be crowd controlled. It cannot be slowed. And you cannot do any fellowship maneuvers on him. And... Just to make things more interesting, at 20% of the boss health, he gets this buff. It's Frozen Wrath. And thus he gets the 25% melee damage, um, increased damage. So at 20%, he starts hitting a ton. Now, what Dylan is going to do is from time to time, he's going to summon some adds to come in. And those adds will buff him up. So all of the previous ads that we've gone through this raid so far can be summonsed, and all of their buffs will be applied to him. Now, for Tier 1, this is kind of the breakdown that we have. At 90%, um, so we're going to start off the fight, and we're just going to fight Dylan. At 90%, he's going to shout, defend the frost heart, let none escape. That's going to summon a uh, wave of warrior sappers and black arrows. What will happen is this the two gates on the side will drop down and the warriors and sappers will come out of those. Burn order, kill order, we'll do warriors first, then we take care of the sappers, then we can take care of the blood black arrows. Okay. At 75% he's going to do his um, dance in the center of the room that is called flee your doom. I'll go over that in a minute. Then at 60%, he's going to do the Frost Horde Will Devour You, where he summons Frost Callers and Whelpings. We want to kill the Frost Callers first and then the Whelplings. And then at 50%, he does Flee Your Doom. At 30%, he does his third Ad Wave Summons when he shouts, Kill them or it'll be the lash for the lot of you. And you'll have Guardians, Warriors, Sappers, and Black Arrows come out. You want to kill Guardians first, then the Warriors, then the Sappers, then Black Arrows. Okay, remember, Guardians um, reduces everybody's um, damage by 66%, so you've got to get that Guardian down first. Then at 25%, he's going to do Flee Your Doom again, and then at 20% um, is when he gets the Frozen Wrath buff. In T1, all we do is you just focus on him and you kill him as quickly as possible. At T2, though, he becomes immune to taking damage. There are four chains like chandeliers that's hanging from the ceiling. You gotta drag Dylan over to the chandelier. Only ranged can take down the chandelier. The chandelier falls onto Dylan's head, making him susceptible to damage. You take him down and you rinse and repeat until Dylan's dead. Okay, now let's talk about Flee Your Doom. During that, what's gonna happen is that Dylan is gonna run to the center of the room. He's gonna do Flee, say, flee your doom and this is when he's going to do a massive aoe hammer down um, action in the center of the room and the only way to be protected about it is, is that you got to run up the stairs to the sides you know where the um, wooden pillars are those are going to drop down you're going to run 
up there and hide behind one of the um, stone pillars. There will be a white box on the floor and that will give you this protection buff that protects you against echoes of the gray malls. You won't get hit and then you'll kind of see the screen rumble a bit. As soon as the rumble stops, you can run back out and re-engage with um, Dylan. Now, a couple of things. If you still have any mobs up when Dylan does flee your doom, those mobs will follow you wherever you're going. So they'll come. So don't stop fighting even though you're behind the pillars. If you've got the ads up, you still got to be taking care of the ads, okay? And then um, if you get caught on the spikes, it is an instant death, meaning you got to be quick paying close attention as to when you got to run back out again, back into the, into the boss room. If you get caught, it's an instant death, and it becomes very tricky to rest somebody in that sense. Um, if you're going to have to rest somebody because of the spikes, you cannot rest uh, while the spikes are up. You've got to wait for the spikes to go down, which will only go down once Dylan does flee your doom. Then, while he's doing Flee Your Doom, you've got to go run and hide, so you can't res while you're hiding. Then, you've got to run out, because if you wait, if you try to res while you're, while you're doing protection, there's not enough time to do the res and run out and avoid the spikes. So, what you want to do as the reser is when Dylan says Flee Your Doom, you want to run to hiding. As soon as the rumble stops, you want to run out, and then you want to immediately do the res. And if your timing is down, you should be able to get people up. But they've got to also be watching the screen, because the second that they get that res, they have to click. Um, they have to click it to come up. If they're even a second late, they will be caught again and they will die again. And then you'll have to wait for the next flee or doom. All right, now I'm going to go over um, to show you, and I'm going to go over into the game to show you exactly um, how to do boss 2. Beyond the falls of Amgarustun, in the Cloven Gap, lies Abnan Kara, the hidden hole. Okay, welcome to zone 2. By of the our, during the rebellion um, against the Longbeards in the Elder Days. Welcome to phase two of our of raid crossbar. here. Here we're gonna have all of our orcs that we're gonna be fighting. There will be guardians. Retreat, guardians are will need to be the first to die because they put that negative sixty six percent damage on everybody. Warriors just do wounds. Black arrows do really almost very little on tier one. And then we will have um after the next round, we will have the callers. The caller summons the totems that do the um, negative 25% mitigations on the totems. And yeah, and that's it. And I will be walking you through it as we do each of these pulls. I'm loaded and ready to go. We also have sappers, and sappers just put down those puddles, fire puddles, so you just need to make sure that you stay out of the fire puddles at all times. They do do a lot of percentage morale damage, like any other um, sapper in the game. We want to break down this guardian first, because of the defense they get. Warriors, and everything's dead because we had AOE. Good go. We'll do this guardian by himself because of the debuff that he gives. So let's get him down. Remember to remove corruption removals when you see them. Okay, let's 
this black arrow now. Now in this group we've got one guardian, two warriors, two black arrows, and sappers. So burn order here would be guardians, warriors, um, black arrows, and then sappers. But I suppose with all the AoEs we have, that the sappers will type without any problems. We're gonna have some puddles, gotta move out of all those puddles. Guardian needs to die first. Next I'm looking for warrior. Second. And sappers are already dead from AoE, and so now we just have to finish off the black arrows, and then this pull will be done. Gonna move up to try and get into the heals. Okay, and that, that's full. Now the spike wall went down. Now we've got another group here. This group has got frost collars in them. The frost collars have about a uh, drop the totems. The totems have about a 10 to 15 meter range for the aura for the grizzly effect. That's why we end up pulling them over here. You'll notice, however, that that frost collar is always very reluctant to move. So we typically have the range take him out so that we don't have to get into the grizzly effect of the totems. Totems that say ally off, we do not have to target. We burn the warriors down with the AoE. I'm as a ranged, I'm gonna take down this totem. These are static totems. They do oh, somebody just pulled everything. This is gonna be a lot of fun. We are gonna focus frost collars first. Frost collars need to die first. My target, please. Healer just went down. This is not looking very good. Um, Alright, tapping through. Oh, we got a guardian up. There we go. Alright, got him targeted. So that is what not to do. So this is actually a good way to show you guys. Um, there is a goat here that if you do wipe, you do not have to run all the way back. You can just click on the goat and that'll take you right to the next fight.
Okay, so this was a much better pull. We're just gonna kill Frost Collar first. We can ignore that totem pole because once the Frost Collar goes down, then that totem pole will go down as well, since it is called Ally from Frost Collar. See, totem pole is gone. Oh. Alright, back to the worms. They're next on our kill order list. Alright, so this next group two will see me. has a guardian, two um, collars, and a drake. Typically, we want to keep the collars CC'd and mezzed while we burn down the guardian, then the worms, then the warriors, then the drakes. We're killing Guardian first because of the 66% um, medication. Alright, I've got the Guardian targeted. The reason we burn the Guardian first is because of um, um, that 66% that he does. We only have one CC here, so we have the left frost collar targeted. Gotta do the right one. Gotta do a corruption removal. And then I'm starting with the frost collar. There we go. Okay. After the frost collar, we're gonna swap to worms next. There's the worms. Worms next. Move out of puddles, please. Don't have any live worms. So the drake's next on the list. And so he's now top of the list. We're killing him. To interrupt that. And then we've got the two blood arrows, which is way at the bottom. I believe on tier 2, however, they do do massive poison damage, which would move them way up in the kill order. Alright, now we are here at boss 2. This one we call Dylan. So, what Dylan is going to do is every um, percentage that I've listed for you in the slides, he will be coming down and doing his um, summonings ads, and then he'll do the flea. And then we'll summon ads, and then we'll do the flea. And um, yeah, so the burn order will be once again as I discussed on the slides, and we will just show you how this fight goes. Ads will come out at 90, 60, and 30 percent, and hammer down is or flea is at 75, 50, and 25 percent. At 20 percent, he gets a damage buff, and we'll just kind of burn him down real quick.
You. You lay down your arms and swear fealty to Freemill Frostheart. You will serve the Frost Horde or you will die. So it has been for the Orcs, so it will be. When all the so-called free peoples have bent to her will, only the Dwarf Prince will remain to oppose her. So come then, meet me. Pretty strong. I'm gonna burn him down to his first mark as quick as possible. Okay, our first ads are in. Warriors will go first. There are sappers in here, so we gotta be mindful of where we're standing. I've got aggro, so you can pull it, please. Warriors next. Hide. So see, this is an excellent example of where we still have ads. Screens rumbled. We need to run back out, and then we'll continue cleaning up. Ads. We need to get the black arrows. So poor Pohan got trapped. All ads are down. Now we'll go back to the boss. We'll have the next wave of ads coming in at 60%, so they're almost here. This wave should include frost collars and wild things. So we'll do the frost collar first and then worry about the wild things afterwards. Frost collars. Remember, frost collars heal everybody else up around them. This one's got to have corruption on him. He's got the blue circle around him. So we want to make sure we remove corruptions. Then we can start it. On him. We do not have to worry about Totem because the Totem will go down once he goes down. And now we've got only Wild Pumps left that so we can AoE and get rid of. We just have to be mindful of where we're standing. As the puddles are up. Now we've got Plea. We gotta run and hide. And we're gonna have Shaking. And running back out, see the res hasn't gone out yet. He resisted. The res is out, live, and we're all set. Moving over back to boss now. Oh, no, we're gonna want to go We need to get rid of it. Get first. Don't get too late. Okay, now we can go back on boss. This one we've got warriors and sappers again. Hiding, hiding, flee. 
got a guardian in this group, remember? So we must get the guardian. I must run. Alright. Okay. Let's clean up this mess. First, take out the guardian. It's got cor corruption on him. Please remove corruption on guardian. Thank you. Guardian down. Have to get some heals. After the guardians, we've got to take out the warriors. So we're just gonna ignore all the ads at this point and just burn the boss down as quickly as possible. Uh, leave the ads. Focus boss. That is boss two concluded. If you would like a PDF version of these slides, click on the link below to download your free copy. If you want more Locher rating videos, make sure to click the subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss an episode. Drop a comment below on how many times you died on Dylan and how long it took you to figure out to hide behind the pillar. Until next time.